Major depressive disorder is the leading cause of disability worldwide. Depressive disorders have consistently ranked amongst the top four health conditions for years of life lived with disability. The development of depression can be attributed to a number of factors, including genetic, neural, and environmental. Currently, most common antidepressants target the monoamine system. However, fewer than half of all patients with MDD experience complete recovery of symptoms following first-line treatments. Approximately one-third suffer from treatment-resistant depression, where they fail to respond to at least two different antidepressant therapies. To solve this, researchers have been looking beyond the monoamine pathway to find treatment targets. One such pathway is the glutamate system, and in particular, the AMPA and NMDA receptors. Clinical trials suggest that decreased activation of NMDA and increased activation of AMPA receptors leads to improvements in mood. Ketamine is an NMDA antagonist, meaning that it reduces activity of the NMDA receptors, resulting in a relative increase in AMPA receptor activity. Through this, it is able to improve depressive symptoms in individuals who may not have previously seen improvements from drugs that target the monoamine system. As such, it demonstrates a potential for efficacy in treatment-resistant depression. Today, we will be talking to Dr. Joshua Rosenblatt, an expert in the field, to learn more about ketamine and its effects. Dr. Rosenblatt has over 2,000 citations in the field of mood and anxiety disorders. Currently, he is an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Toronto. He is also a staff psychiatrist at, the, at Toronto Western Hospital and the medical director of Canada's first ketamine infusion therapy clinic, the Canadian Rapid Treatment Centre for Excellence. Today, he will be joining us to discuss the ins and outs of ketamine for the treatment of depression. What makes ketamine different from conventional antidepressant treatment? Yeah, so ketamine is a very uh, different treatment compared to conventional antidepressant medications for, for several reasons. Um, if we break it down, the, the first kind of big reason that uh, you could consider is the mechanism of action. So how the drug actually works and how it leads to the antidepressant effects. Um, so for the past several decades, all the antidepressants have worked on the monoamine system. So that's serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, these sort of familiar neurotransmitters. And uh, by increasing them or decreasing them, that leads to antidepressant effects. Um, ketamine is unique in that it targets the glutamate system. Uh, so glutamate is the main neurotransmitter in the brain that leads to activation or uh, signaling neurons to turn on. Um, and that's the system that it modulates or modifies to lead to antidepressant effects. Um, so uh, as you can imagine, for people that have tried a bunch of different medications that all affect serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, the chances of yet another medication working on the same system working gets lower and lower. Whereas with ketamine, because it works on glutamate, it really kind of resets the score and your chance of having a benefit from it um, uh, is still fairly good because it's not really uh, working on serotonin, norepinephrine, or dopamine, uh, but this other uh, key neurotransmitter. Um, so the mechanism is certainly one uh, key thing to think about. The other important difference is that it's rapid acting. Um, with most antidepressants, it would take one to two months for it to kick in, whereas with ketamine, for some people, it starts to work even after the first treatment, so within hours of receiving a single dose. Most people don't actually have the antidepressant effects after the first dose. For most people, it takes a series of doses, but still, we'd be looking at one to two weeks until you know if the medication is working or not. Um, so that's certainly a, a large benefit where uh, you don't have to wait months and months to know if it's going to work. You know within a couple of weeks if it's going to work. So that's a, a key difference. Uh, and that also relates to the mechanism uh, where the glutamate mechanism seems to work uh, quite a bit faster. Um, another key difference is that it specifically has been shown to reduce suicidal thoughts. Um, with antidepressants, they haven't actually been shown to clearly reduce suicidal thoughts. I, I'm certainly a believer that antidepressants still can save lives and can reduce suicidal thought patterns, but the research studies haven't convincingly, convincingly shown that it can reduce suicidal thoughts. Ketamine, though, has been shown to uh, actually actively and strongly reduce suicidal thoughts, even independent of the antidepressant effects. So even if someone doesn't have the antidepressant effects, they might no longer be having suicidal thoughts. So that seems to be something specific to ketamine. Um, and then the fourth thing that I've mentioned just in in terms of the key difference is evidence for treatment resistant depression, mm -hmm. where with most antidepressants, when you're doing a clinical trial, you're recruiting people that have depression that haven't tried any other medications. But with ketamine, uh, for the large majority of the clinical trials, what they did was they recruited people who had already not responded to a bunch of different medication treatments. And what they found is even in that very difficult to treat group, a lot of people were getting better. Are there any common side effects that you guys have been seeing in patients? 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with the ketamine infusions, uh, the infusion is over 40 minutes and the majority of the side effects is during the infusion or for the few, few minutes afterwards. So when we think about the side effects of ketamine, there's both the physical and the psychological. In terms of psychological side effects, the main thing would be dissociative side effects. So dissociative symptoms is when you feel like you're in almost a dreamlike state. You might feel a bit confused. You might feel that things are slowing down or speeding up. The colors might start to change. Um, you might start to feel that things are distorted a bit um, and uh, have an out-of-body experience. It's different from psychosis in that you're not having hallucinations. Typically, you're not hearing voices or seeing things, but you're just having this distorted dreamlike state that you're, uh, you're kind of floating in. For the majority of people, it's actually a pleasant experience, uh, but for the minority of people, uh, this could be a distressing experience to kind of lose control and, and feel that things are uh, uh, too different. Um, so that's kind of the main psychological symptoms, and that would resolve within five minutes after finishing the infusion, typically. Um, then there's the physical symptoms. So physical symptoms would be a bit of an increase in your blood pressure during the infusion, which also resolves within 10 to 15 minutes after finishing the infusion. And then nausea would be the other common thing where uh, because it does uh, affect a part of your brain that produces those nausea signals uh, for around 30% of people, they would experience significant nausea. We do have medications that can take away the nausea, that can take away the increased blood pressure in case uh, uh, things are um, uh, you know, getting out of hand or too particularly distressing. Uh, but for the majority of people, they're able to tolerate it fairly well. We don't have long-term data uh, for people that have repeated uh, treatments in terms of uh, uh, long-term side effects and things like that, but it seems to be at least based on what we know that the side effects is really on the day of the infusion, but not much persisting into the days or weeks after that. That's all for part one. Click the link in the description box below for part two.